This program is brought to you by Stanford University. In my lab, we're trying to build, or we're building tools that will help us understand the brain. This is a humongous problem because the number of nerve cells in the brain is humongous. There are 100 billion nerve cells. Every second, each of these 100 billion cells sends a brief flash of electricity to 10,000 others. That's an enormous amount of traffic. Actually, it's 100 times the number of bits that are zipping around in the internet. Now, to understand how you do that or how the brain Googles itself, scientists are building simulations and they are running them on computers, starting with models of individual neurons. With two dual core chips, you can simulate about 30 neurons like that one. With a 32, card, a 32 chip board, you can simulate a WEMS 302 neuron brain. And with a 32 board rack, you can simulate an ant 10,000 neuron brain. And with a 64 rack supercomputer, you can simulate a honeybee's million neuron brain. That's depressing. <laughs> you know, a $100 million supercomputer with $100,000 a month electric bill only gets us up to a honeybee. <laughs> My lab is actually pioneering a radically different approach that can tackle the human brain. Instead of actually running these simulations on these computers, we are actually emulating directly the flow of ions across the membrane of a neuron with the flow of electrons across the channel of a transistor. This works because the forces that drive ions across a neuron's membrane and those that drive electrons across the transistor's channel are the same. And so actually, a single transistor can give us the answer instead of actually switching thousands of transistors like a digital computer does. We've used this analog approach to model eight different parts of the brain. This is the chip. It was designed by John Arthur, a postdoc in my lab. With just three quarters of a million transistors, it's as powerful as a rack, one of those racks that you saw, and it uses a million times less electricity. This is the blueprint for the chip. It models 1,300 neurons connected by 21,000 synapses. They are arranged in a 16 by 16 array on the chip. Each of these tiles models 84 synapses and five neurons. These neurons come in two different flavors, modeled after pyramidal cells and basket cells in the hippocampus, a structure that's buried deep inside the temporal lobe of the cortex. This is the problem that the hippocampus solves. What letter is this? It's a fragment. Which letter is that? Yes. S, S. OK, that's correct. OK, so the way that your brain just did that is totally different from the way in which a computer would do it. What a computer would do is that it will take this fragment and compare it with all the letters in the alphabet, retrieving them from memory pixel by pixel. And so when it went along with those comparisons and it found a good match with the S, then it would recognize that fragment as being part of an S. Now, in the brain, there's no such separation between processing and memory. When the first time that you saw an S, or while you were in kindergarten and you were, you were learning how to read, your brain, the setting neurons in your brain responded to that image of the S. And what happened is that synapses formed between those neurons. So now, when you see a fragment of the S, some of those neurons are going to respond, and then they are going to recruit the remaining neurons through these connections that were formed earlier. And so you get a pattern of activity in your brain, which is the same pattern of activity if you're actually seeing an S. And therefore, you perceive this fragment as being part of an S or an S. And so this is how it works. OK, that's the fragment coming along. Those are, now think of these as neurons. You can see the neurons that were responding to the fragment then recruit the remaining neurons. 
through those connections that were formed earlier. OK, let's do a demo. Now, let me explain you how this is going to work. I have actually John's chip hooked up to my computer or my laptop through a USB cable. What the cable does is that it connects pixels on the screen to neurons on John's chip in a point-to-point -point fashion. And the way that the setup works now is that those that are connected to pixels in the S will fire. And the precise time at which they fire determines the color that we assign to that neuron. And so you see the neurons firing in this pattern in the shape of an S. Those that are connected to pixels that are not part of the S don't fire, and we just paint those guys black. Okay. And so the first thing that I'll do is I'll turn on learning on the chip. And what you see is that the colors will become more uniform, like you see here. The reason why that happens is that connections start forming between neurons that fire early and those fire, that fire late, and primes the late firing neurons to fire earlier. Everything becomes more synchronized, therefore the colors that we assign are more uniform. And so once we do that, we turn on learning, then I'll have the chip actually Google itself by giving it part of the S. Okay? So I'll only present half of the pixels in the S like, like that. If all goes well, you see the basically pattern fill in or complete itself, and you, the S will become recognizable. OK, here we go. So you can see the, the, the neurons responding to the S. You can see, actually, the charge building up in a neuron that I actually selected. You can see the precise times at which all the, the neurons responded. Those are the same guys that are plotted here. And you can see how the colors are assigned. Red for early, blue for late. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on learning. And you're going to see the, all the uh, spike times line up. And you can see a more uniform pattern here because the firing times are very similar. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to present half the pattern. So you see half of the neurons drop out. And then I'm going to have the chip Google itself. And you should see that S pop out. You see that? You recognize the S? And so I'm just going to wrap up now. Um, this uh, Right now, actually, we are building a system in the lab right now that will be a paperback size system that will be capable of modeling a million neurons in real time. That means that system is going to be as powerful, of a room, as, powerful as a room size supercomputer. Now, a million neurons is still you know, five orders of magnitude away from the size of your brain, which is 100 billion neurons. We think that this technology can allow us to build something that can tackle the brain in a rock-sized, uh, you know, just a rock-sized uh, computer that can do that. Um, you know, that might happen in the next 10 years. It will depend on, you know, getting more funding and so on for all this research that's going on <laughs> at Stanford, all this great research. But I want to thank you very much for your time and for your attention. <laughs>